Hello, good people of YouTube, Mount Batten here, and today we have the new Dutch cruiser Johan de Witt in port to review for you guys today. I just want to give an absolutely massive shout out to the patrons for making this review definitely possible. Um, the Johan de Witt is in, of course, the early access bundles, and you have to go through so many of them with a chance of getting her, and well, after I got lucky with the, um the Schultz and the German DD preview event, I, I did not get so lucky with uh, the, the Vit, although not as worse as, I, as I've had before. I had to go through what? Let's see. Um, and these are the bundles, by the way, that you can go through. 34 of them! So, yeah. Don't do this. De de definitely don't do this. I mean, like, you do get some good stuff, like the special signal uh, flags. You get Spring Sky camos and the Mosaic camos, which, which are some of the best in the game. But yeah, definitely don't pay this much for a Techland ship that's going to be out in uh, in a couple of months. Yeah, yeah. I'm just doing this just to review it for you guys, and I've got the ad revenue from the channel to get it through, and the donations from Patreons to do it as well. But the average Joe, don't worry about doing this. These ships are going to be completely free to grind in a couple of months. I promise you they're not that good. Even if they were that good to where it would be worth it to shell out that much money, don't shell out that much money. Just wait for two months. You can get this for free. Again, I'm just doing it just to review for you guys. But anyway, again, massive shout out to those guys whose names are who should have been up on screen right now. Um, and we'll go ahead and take a look at this ship here. Look at her base characteristics and stats. Uh, no commander skills, no modules have been applied to her just yet. So we're going to look at her completely stock. And this is the tier 9 ship. And the thing about the Dutch cruisers is that when you get to the higher tiers, they're more like super cruisers than cruisers. And the tier 10's pretty much just Scharnhorst, just about, but with like a, a lot more freeboard. So let's go ahead and take a look at her right now. So, armor layout. Nose is 25 with a 40mm icebreaker bow. That's very nice, actually. Dang. Um... 40 millimeter upper plating, torpedo plating is 27 millimeters, start is completely 25 millimeters though, stern deck is 25, mid deck is 30, bow deck is 25, uh, turrets have a 200 millimeter face, 120 millimeter slanted top, 90 millimeter top, sides are also 90 and 120 for the quarter panel up there. Barbette's at 250, and the conning tower is 100. Alright, so let's take a look at her citadel. Is it exposed? It is exposed. It's a little bit right there. Does it get covered? Oh, it does get covered by a 225mm belt. Oh, that's quite nice. That's... Huh. So... Man, this this start look a little bit fun here, guys. Because uh, the these ships are very much close in ships, and you'll see why here in a moment. But that's oh, okay, 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 okay. That's intriguing. I know with like the the tier ten it was a design that they asked the Germans to help out with, and it basically handed them the plans to Scharnhorst. So yeah, uh, but I'm not exactly sure which what design this one is. All right, the main guns. So you have nine 240 millimeter guns, pretty much the same caliber and amount that uh. Henri the fourth gets, so they reload in 16 seconds space. They have a 30 second 180 time, a maximum dispersion of 170 meters. Uh, their HE shell does a maximum of 3400 damage, and a 20% chance of causing a fire per shell base. And they have 40 millimeters of armor pen. AP shell does 6100 maximum damage, and they have a maximum range of 14.6 kilometers right now. And you have an AP and HE shell velocity of 900 meters a second. So pretty nice velocity there. Uh, but the base range isn't so great. But we can equip the uh, range module right now to get that up a little bit further. But still, it's going to be on the shorter side of most every other tier 9 cruiser. Alright, secondaries, you get 6x2. So 12 of these 120mm guns. They reload in 3 seconds. Maximum HE shell damage is 1700. 7% chance of starting fire. 20mm of HE pen. And maximum range is 7 kilometers of base. That's... Not bad either. Ironically, that's half of the base firing range. <laughs> oh, that's funny to think of. And, of course, she has the airstrike consumable. And she only has two flights of those. So there's ten aircraft in a flight. Each aircraft has 2100 uh, HP. Six bombs for each payload. And they do a maximum damage of 6100. 6, 
36 millimeters of pin, their 35% chance of starting a fire, and they have a range of 12 kilometers and a reload time of 100 seconds. So that's going to be interesting to get finally get our hands on those to see what that's like. A defense is actually quite good, apparently. 85 is her base A rating. She has 14 of the single 20mm uh, 20 or Orlikens, 14 the of the single 40mm Bofors, and then the secondaries are dual purpose. Okay, has a range of six kilometers, which is actually pretty decent, and its continuous damage is 270, 276, and the flak shells do 1610 damage per explosion. All right. Maneuverability maximum speed 32.1 knocks. Go figure for a massive cruiser like that. Uh, with a speed flag, I think you can get that up to like 34. Turning circle race of 740 meters and a rush shift time is 16.7 seconds. Get somewhat of 12.3 kilometers, which is within 2 kilometers. Oh no, just outside of 2 kilometers from its base range. So, yeah. Uh, we'll see what we can build on this ship. It's an interesting ship so far. Definitely a close range in ship. Especially with the armor scheme and everything I'm seeing here so far. Oh, there are no torpedoes on here, are there? Nope, no torpedoes. Um, I thought this one had torpedoes. I guess not. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and captain her and module her out. And I'll meet you guys right back here. Okay, so like a ditz, I forgot that uh, this is a tech line ship. And I just told you guys the a hull stats and not the uh, the b hull stats along with the range, uh, the range finder of the b hull. So let's see. Looks like we get more AA, more maneuverability, and more hit points. Okay, so we got 3,800 more hit points. Now our hit points are 45,900. And what do we gain? We gain some more AA mounts to where our A is now 93. What do we get more of? Oh, the Bofors became 14 dual-mounted uh, dual Bofors, same with the 20mm guns. Okay, and I think our rudder shift time increased as well. Yeah, down to 11.9 seconds. Okay. And our maximum range is now 16 kilometers. Alright. My, my bad. But there we go. Alright, she is captain and modulated out right now. Uh, it's an interesting thing that I went with here. Also, by the way, for consumables, she does get repair party, damage con. Not damage con. Well, of course, she gets damage con. A DFAA and hydro with no option of switching anything out. And of course, AP, HE, and the airstrikes. So the module build, I went with what's essentially my clan battles cruiser build, except for taking damage con uh, one and two because this is a pretty big boat. I imagine it's going to get HE spammed a lot. So we went with main armaments mod one because we don't have any torpedoes or anything. And of course we want our main guns to stay in the fight because they seem to be quite nice and I'd like to keep them. Of course damage con one because this is pretty much a battleship or battle cruiser and fire suck on these things. Um, enemy system mod 1 to get more accuracy out of the guns, damage con 2 because fire suck, concealment because it's nice to leave a situation when you're not doing so well, and gunfire control system mod 2 to give us a bit more range. Now the commander, um, since this is of course the first sh ship in this tech tree, well one of the first ships in this tech tree, uh, I didn't have any Dutch commanders laying around so... I had to boost them up with the commander XP that I had earned in clan battles. All 1.7 million XP that I had gone now reduced to atoms. Alright, which, which means I have a pretty weird build on here because I wanted to do the full lighthouse build. And that's something I may try later, but I wanted to try more of a sensible build first before we go straight to, uh, to uh, cracked out squirrel levels of ridiculousness. So, um, I went with Grease the Gears. Consumable enhancements, adrenaline rush, safety circle, and like, uh, when I was going down the, 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 the two line the first time, like, well, I mean, I don't really need priority of targets. I'm not going to be like throttle juking or anything. I'm just going to be playing it kind of, probably kind of like a super cruiser. And I don't really need power technician because the guns have a 40% chance of start, I'm sorry, a 20% chance of starting a fire already. And that's already really, really good. So, I mean, uh. And, like, you know, one more percent isn't really going to boost that up that much. Um, so I went with Safety Circle instead of Pyrotechnician. I don't know. I may come back and do this one instead. We'll see how the, gun, the guns perform. Anyway, then Adrenaline Rush. Uh, superintendent for the extra heal. Hydro and DFAA. Uh, survivability Expert. And then Consumer Expert. Which has made an interesting boat for us at the moment. So, 
Um, now, our concealment is down to 10 kilometers flat, which is really nice. Our guns now have an 18.6 kilometer range, which is pretty darn nice as well, with a 26.1 second 180 time. And now the ship goes 33.7 knots, just shy of 40 knots. And again, I don't really know much much about the ship. I don't know if it's got the battle battleship uh, burn time. I don't know if it's got the cruiser burn time. Um, I, I don't remember. I don't recall if it gets that or not. But I'm about to find out here in a moment. And again, if this build proves to be just utterly terrible, I'll go and swap it out. But again, first time out with the new ship, it's going to be an interesting one. So let's go ahead, hop in the battle, and see what's up with her. All right, guys, voiceover Mountbatten here. And, well, this is an interesting little boat. So, the guns. Let's start there, shall we? The guns are... Well, they, 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 they want to give you the vibe that this thing was designed by Germans. <laughs> uh, the guns are not consistent. I had salvos that were good enough to make the Slava blush. I had salvos that were bad enough to make the Germans blush. But the thing is, the velocity of the guns is certainly quick enough to where aiming is quite easy, and they are still accurate enough to where you can hit larger targets like large cruisers and battleships quite easily. And you will be hitting DDs and light cruisers too, it's just that you'll be nicking them with a shell or two, which is a shame because I didn't really get to use that much AP, because the shots just wouldn't connect. I did try a couple of AP primarily games, but I mean, I was getting so little damage because they were, you know, hitting the where I wasn't aiming, so they're hitting the armor belt, the the turrets, the barbettes, things like that. So I just switched over to HG, and the fire chance is definitely good enough to where I, you will be burning ships down. Now it's not quite like you know Spallance with RNG on its side in terms of fire but it's definitely good enough to where you can rely on the HE to reliably set fires and get your damage that way. Another thing too is that the matches that I had this morning at least uh, the red team was trying their best speed run back to port. Uh, I had several games where by the six seven minute mark half the red team was dead and we lost maybe a DD or two and that was it but the match you're watching right now is actually a pretty good match it, it went on for quite some time and the enemy team actually put up a fight rather than just folding like a lawn chair in the first five minutes. Again, that's what everyone's experiencing right now because I don't know what's going on with the matchmaker or whatever. But anyway, um, so the airstrike, the next thing people are probably wanting to hear about besides the guns. Uh, the airstrike, what, what is that like? Is that any good? Is it as crazy as you've seen? Uh, the answer is no. No, it's not. The changes they made to it with the, the increased... Um, actually, the, they increased the bomb drop time, then they decreased it a little bit. But the, the truth is, if whatever it is that you're targeting has the slightest inkling that they're being targeted by this thing, they're going to move. If they don't move, and if they eat all of these bombs, or a vast majority of, the, of these bombs, that is 100% on them. I, I mean anything. I targeted a, sl a Slava that was parked next to an island, he had time to get out the way. He ate, he ate maybe two, which did nothing to him. Anything, anything that has an engine and is moving can dodge 99% of these bombs. Unless you have the predictive abilities of a psychic, they're going to dodge most of these bombs. Which is a good thing. These bombs are very good for encouraging players to move. They're very tactical in their use. They're not really, in my experience at least, great for farming damage. Unless they're sitting bow to an island in like a, a battleship or a very large cruiser, like a super cruiser, and they simply don't have the engine speed to reverse and get out of there, then they're going to miss these bombs. These bombs are also quite good for encouraging DDs to move out of their smoke or they will eat the bombs. Uh, that, that had a, quite a funny moment where that was very effective for that. The DD refused to leave a smoke, and I did kill him with these, but he was at like 1,200 health anyway. They're, they're good for that. But, um, again, they're more of a tactical use. If you want someone to move out from behind that island and come into your line of fire, it's great for that. Because it forces them to either eat the damage from the bombs or move. And that's what its main purpose was described as, and it is very good at doing that in-game. 
Um, and, and again, like, if you're in a bowing situation with another ship or something, you can throw them at them. But, uh, again, you, you can move enough to where you will angle your ship to the most advantageous position of not being hit by the bombs, which is kind of angled. Um, but then at that point, you're having to show some of your broadside to the enemy ship. So it's like, do you want to take the risk and eat the bombs, or do you want to, you know, take the risk and try to turn out of it, but then maybe get shot at by... Um, the, the Dutch cruiser, that's up to you. And, and honestly, with, with the RNG that these guns have, they're probably going to miss or only hit you with one or two shells, even from like 12 kilometers away. These are truly, truly close-in cruisers. Now, are they good at being close-in cruisers? The, the vet here, yeah, the armor's really nice on it. Um, it, it it's more of that German experience, because at longer ranges, you eat pins, but you won't get citadeled. And at closer ranges, the armor is very good. You got that nice icebreaker bow. You've got that nice turtle backish armor going on on your citadel. So at close ranges, you are pretty darn well detected. And at those close ranges, your guns will connect, so you can use the AP and be a lot more punchy then. And it's pretty good for that. It's maneuverable too. It's really maneuverable. I, I didn't stress that that enough. In port. It's got an 11 second rudder shift time, which is pretty darn good. And of course, you can build into that with the rudder module and, and such. But it does have the BB burn time, so yeah. And plus, right now, if you do manage to somehow get one of these, which again, don't spend money trying to get this ship. Just grind the line out when it comes out in two months. Um, everyone wants to shoot you. Everyone wants to shoot you. And I know, like, you know, YouTuber filming review, that had an effect too. But, like, I mean, everyone wants you dead because of the airstrike. Like, people want you to cease existence. And... The damage con modules are really putting in work right now, along with the flags and such. AA is actually really good too. Um, I had DFAA up when, and you probably saw the clip already when another Devit was trying to bomb me with his airstrike. And man, the 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 AA, the AA does work. Now, granted, I have a Neptune sitting next to me, but still, we've seen uh, these planes fly through several ships before and not, and not the speed planes get, get, uh, get shot down. But yeah, AA is very, very nice on this thing. Is it enough to like deter a CV? I don't know. Out of all the really quick games that I had, I didn't get a CV match, oddly enough. So yeah, can't tell you how it performs against the CV, but if the indication against the strike bombers is, uh, anything, it's pretty good. Concealment-wise, that 10km concealment is an absolute godsend. I would highly recommend you build into concealment with your Dutch cruisers. At least with the the, the, the VIT. That 10km concealment range, oh boy. That makes your job of murdering DDs even better. Because you can sneak up on them. And this HE, again, with, with the velocity and the flat shell arcs. This HE is great for dealing with DDs. And again... You're probably not going to hit all shells on them because of the action of the guns, but it does happen every now and then, and when you do that, it's like you're playing Venezia sometimes with the amount of health you can strip off of off of these uh, these DDs. From my experience in the Devit, it's this weird battleship-ish ship that's really surprisingly good at dealing with DDs, is very maneuverable, can't really hit much at range, has great armor for close-in range, has the ability to force a target to move out from cover, and it's very stealthy too on top of all that. So it's a very interesting cruiser line, and if the tier 10, the golden line, is more of this, I'm really looking forward to it. This is It's been a pretty fun ship to play, despite the really, really bad matches I've been having, <laughs> um, but it's been really consistent. In the matches that ended by the 10 minute mark, I was already at like 60, 70,000 damage. And in the match that you're watching right now that actually went on for quite some time, you see the end result for yourself here in a minute. It, it, it's a really consistent ship in terms of the damage output. Again, the airstrike isn't really, at least from my experience, there for damage. It's more to force targets to move, which is pretty nice because when there are some ships like Soviet battleships, um, American cruisers, that once they get behind that island, they ain't coming out until you shove a DD in their face or you risk going at your ship torn apart to go dislodge them. It is nice to have that ability to force those people to either move or eat that airstrike damage. And again, it's a very, very useful and tactical tool. 
And is this going to replace carriers like some people were saying? Uh, no, 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 <laughs> no. This is not going to replace carriers. Because, again, if anything is in the open water, they'll dodge it. And, sure, they may eat a bomb or two, but that's just negligible damage unless they're like a DD. In which case, those guys, I mean, um, unless they're camping in smoke or camping on an island, they're going to easily dodge this too. So it's not the sky is falling like many, many, many uh, were saying beforehand. But if you island camp, you hug that island, yeah, you might have some of the sky get dropped on you. But again, it's pretty easy to just dodge it. And and two, they do have to be within 12 kilometers of you to get to pull it off. So they have to put their ship pretty close to your island. And unless you've been abandoned by your team, pretty close to your team too. So it's not like they can do it completely, um, com completely unhindered in most cases. I'm sure there's a couple of maps like two brothers where you could definitely pull it off but even then again if you're moving you'll dodge the the bombs quite easy and i've said it like six or seven times i just want to emphasize that they aren't that easy to dodge so just know that if you see one of these ships on the enemy team but anyway guys let me know what you guys think in the comments down below again do not go throw money at this event to get this ship it's going to be free to grind for everybody in a couple of months just wait it out if you want to get your hands on a Dutch cruiser, you can get your hands on most of the line just by grinding the directives and getting the Dutch cruiser tokens. Again, don't throw money at this. This is a tech line ship. It's going to be available to grind in a couple of months, so just be patient, and you'll get your hands on it soon enough. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. One way to 30,000 subs. Just passed 27,100 a couple of days ago, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're all having a wonderful Thursday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.